A bunch of artists are streaming for charity. There's a 40-year-old man teaching mosh self-defense to children. And Danzig finally did an Elvis cover record. I guess it's about time, everyone. Welcome to Last Words here on The Pit. Play the intro. All right, welcome back to Last Words. We're still in our apartments. But, you know, we're going to make it work. I'm your host, Jordan Old, And I'm also here with Katie Irizarry. And Travis Riley. What's hey guys. up, Pam? How's it going, bud? Buds? Hello, I'm still home. <laughs> you know what's weird about like a Zoom call is you can't see anyone's legs, but you kind of know who's wearing pants. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? I feel like there's, I, there's wearing pants energy, and then there's like, I'm wearing pajamas energy. Yeah. Yeah, I just changed into pants for the first time today for this, so you're welcome. Prove it, you coward. <laughs> I'm wearing slippers, though. Okay, all right. Get get those gams out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a special guest this week from the Black Dahlia Murder, their vocalist, Trevor Sternad. How you doing, bud? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me today. I'm pretty well. Just hanging out, having a quarantine beer, and uh, ready to talk about some uh, some current issues and some new records. Yeah, how are you holding up in the inside time? Uh, I'm doing fairly well. Uh, we had the new album just dropped, so I've been able to kind of focus my energy on that, and I've been doing like immense amounts of press, probably uh, over 100 interviews since... Uh, Lockdown started and just been in a whirlwind of press pretty much. So that's been keeping my brain occupied. And I'm thankful to have this during this time, honestly. Well, we're happy to be helping you with that and to provide you with one of those interviews. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, welcome to the interview. Here we go again. <laughs> we listened to your record last week and it's a banger, man. It's hey, really thanks. You guys are, I think, you uh, uh, like a very, uh, a very like, trusty band in this in the scene like every two years there's there's a new album and it's uh you you're uh you're gonna get um like the familiar stuff from black dahlia but you guys always kind of do something a little bit different with each one and it's very refreshing ah thanks that's kind of been the credo man you know we want it to be like a dependable band like you're cannibal corpse you know where you know they're still gonna make a good record but in a way you know what you're gonna get and uh, I think by now, for the, the ninth album, the kids are finally starting to trust us completely. So that's good. <laughs> the ninth, it's taken nine of them. All right. All right. I think I'm on board now. For an ode to indecision? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. A uh, little <laughs> indecision lyrical nod there in the second yeah. song. That's cool. I talked about that with, uh, with Fred Passaro in another interview, which was cool. I did a, an interview about my... Uh, coming into hardcore which is something i don't normally get to talk about so that was kind of fun that's all I, that's all i talk about on here so we're good there is a lot of hardcore uh on the new record which was surprising like uh child of night oh yeah child of night dude uh it is uh like just from the start as the kids say it's a <laughs> it's ah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much all right, guys, let's get into the topic of the week. Pucifer is teasing a new song. Hooray. We had two last year, and we're getting Pucifer this year. How are we feeling? Well, we had also, too, a perfect circle the year before that, so it's kind of just like a Maynard hat trick, which is pretty cool. I'm excited. I have heard there was little snippets on Instagram of some of the songs, and they have, like, a real, like, industrial vibe. They're super catchy. Definitely have, like, a Pucifer vibe, which is a little more, like, experimental and avant-garde. I mean, I guess everything that Maynard does to a degree is experimental, but I think it's just cool that we just got like three records in a row from Maynard. Trevor, are you a Maynard fan? Uh, somewhat. I really like the early Tool records, uh, the first handful, but I, I find it to be them to be kind of long-winded anymore. So maybe uh, Pucifer might be my, my new avenue, you know, if it's a little bit more straightforward, I could be into mm -hmm. it. I love his voice for sure. He's got an incredible voice. No wine is getting made. Who's making the Maynard wine right now? My Maynard hat trick is uh, not being into any of the bands that he's in. Uh, he does have an awesome voice. Uh, him on that Deftone song is really cool. Oh, yeah, Passenger. <laughs> I just could never really get into any of his projects. Um, 
You ever see that video of him uh, like judo throwing a fan on stage? That's pretty cool too. <laughs> I'm glad he knows about wine and judo. Uh, yeah, I've never been uh, into kind of any of the Maynard bands. Just just for personal preference, I think it's just for me. I'm like it's a little long. Cool. I thought I was going to come out here and be a total hater, so I'm glad. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't hate any of it. It's just really not for me. I, I can appreciate that the the band can play and all that, and he's got a cool voice, and obviously they've been around forever. But um, but yeah, it's just not my not my bag. But it's got a proggy vibe, but it's kind of not the prog that I enjoy for the most part. I like prog that's just like going off and singing about dragons. And then there's all of a sudden a guy playing a glockenspiel and the guitar at the same time. <laughs> Take me on the journey. See, now that's the kind of prog I don't enjoy. So I guess that's why it's reversed and why I love Tool. <laughs> Trevor, where did they lose you? You had They had you and they lost you. Uh, it was after Undertow. Like, I thought up to that point, they were awesome. I, I worshipped them. And uh, I went to Blockbuster Music. Do you guys remember that at all? I went to Blockbuster Music and listened to the CD. You could, like, put any record you want in the store on this, like, disc man. Wait but, a uh, Wait, Blockbuster Wait. Video had a music section? You had a Blockbuster with music? Yeah, what? It was its own store, Blockbuster Music. But it was the Blockbuster that you know. They sold CDs, but you could walk in and open any CD in the place and they would play it for you on a disc man that was like mounted to this big desk. Yeah, it was fun. I checked out all kinds of stuff back there and just ha hanging out there with my bowl cut, you know? Jordan's <laughs> <laughs> face is so surprised. You're like, I was too. We're like, Blockbuster Music? What? <laughs> <laughs> I like rented a Nintendo 64 game, but otherwise it was, it was all just VHS at at Blockbuster, baby. I had no idea. Yeah, it was like its own separate entity. Like it, there was only music for sale in the in the store, pretty much. Was this in Michigan? Are you are you are you from Michigan? Uh, yeah, I was in uh, Waterford, Michigan, kind of near Flint and Pontiac. Interesting. You learn something new every day on the old the old show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you learn something uh, new on the on the idiot box every. Uh... <laughs> All right, guys. Moving on, Surge from System of a Down, released a solo song featuring the Armenian Prime Minister and also his lyrics. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, he released a song on the anniversary of the Armenian genocide that he and his band have been trying to raise awareness for their entire career. This is a huge deal, how we feel it. I appreciate a band that has a massive platform that gives a shit about stuff. It's very refreshing. I really appreciate what Surge is doing. Uh, it's definitely for a greater good. That band has always been really like ahead of their times. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool. And honestly, I listened to that song and I just love hearing Surge's voice. Like I just know it's Surge and there's just something so nostalgic about it. So I would say it was a good song just based on that alone. He's definitely got pipes. And uh, yeah, I thought it was cool that uh, he had the prime minister write the lyrics. You know, I thought that was uh, interesting. I'd like to have a gander at the lyrics. Uh, just out of curiosity, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I feel like, but whatever lyrics we're going to get is going through Google Translate, and then it's something totally different. We'll have <laughs> right. no idea. Okay, also this week, there was a video of a old guy teaching a young girl to defend herself in the mosh pit. It was good. It was a good thing. It went viral. It was nice. Do you guys agree that it was nice? It was cute. Very, very <laughs> adorable pit etiquette. <laughs> I got a little uh, teary-eyed watching that, honestly. I thought it was really wholesome and uh, really pure, you know? It's stuff like that that, you know, uh, make, reminds you that the pit is like a welcoming place, like much like this website, welcoming place. Hence why it's called the pit. <laughs> Did you have a first experience you want to share? Travis, our hardcore mayor? <laughs> I, I remember like my first, the first time I was like an active participant at a show. It was like 96 or 97. I went to see Silent Majority, Glassjaw, and Still Suit play a show. And I was like stage diving and stuff. And that was like the first time I'd ever been like actively involved. Between the ages of like 14 and like 17, like, you know, before you're like of age to like really get into clubs and stuff, there was an all ages venue in my hometown of Staten Island called Dock Street. And I feel like that's where I would go into the pit. And I can't necessarily say I had anyone that was like teaching me, but there was always people who were like, 
I thought it was so cool. There's like, you know, 14 year old girl in the pit or whatever. So they definitely went easy on me though. And I definitely never was ballsy enough to ever do that at like a real show outside of like the local confines. Trevor, talk mosh to me. First time I moshed was, uh, it had to be a, a pop punk show. So <laughs> yeah, the pit, the pit was a little different than, uh, than uh, being at a hardcore show. But uh, yeah, it was just kind of like, you know, pushing people around kind of jovially, some um, hopping around, stuff like that. It was fun. It was really fun. But I do remember seeing my first hardcore show and it was uh, Earth Mover who would like transform into Walls of Jericho eventually. Yeah. But, uh, sitting on the, the periphery of, of the pit and just watching people like spin kick the shit out of each other. And I remember being pretty scared at that moment. Definitely going, whoa. Man, <laughs> My my first pit was also my first hardcore show. So it was the first time I saw it. You know, it was like early 2000s. So it's it's like the metalcore crossover. So there is, I first saw like a bunch of hardcore dancing and I was like, it's like everyone's taking turns to do a weird version of karate. And then a drunk guy with his shirt off ran in and just barreled everybody over. And I was like, I kind of, I like that much better. That's... <laughs> It seems that everybody has their own rules for uh, like mosh pit etiquette or whatever. Do you guys have like one rule that you're like, absolutely, this must be followed at every show? Can't stage dive feet first. Just mean spirited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I saw a kid at one of our shows that um, caught some boots in the face and his teeth just like fell, fell back into his mouth. And it was really sad. It sucked. Don't don't jump feet first. Uh, I mean, the, it's it's kind of a bit of a blanket statement, but just don't be a. D I feel like it's a pretty pretty easy uh, easy scenario where you can see what's cool and what's not cool. Um, somebody falls, pick them up. Damn, you know, <clears throat> I was gonna say if someone falls, pick them up because I feel like that could just be applied to everything, like even like metaphorically in real life. Mm -hmm. But also, too, I feel I have a personal rule where if I'm on a date with you, you need to do the manly thing and stand in front of me and like put your arm. Yeah, you got to do the, the this. You got to yeah. do that. If I'm on a date and a guy does that, I'm like, all right. And don't do it if like you're a random dude. Just if I'm on a date with you, I want to know that you would take a punch for me. I like when uh, when when the dude's at the at the very front of the stage and his girl's in front of him and he's got his arm over her and he's kind of just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my rule is you get one move to get the pit started. If it doesn't, if it doesn't on that move, you pick the wrong time and you need to, to go away. Trevor, do you have like a favorite or like funniest mosh story? Uh, definitely. Uh, I've been waiting to get called on for this. Um, <laughs> a few years back when Carcass first like got back together and we're doing uh, reunion shows, um, we, me and my friends drove from Detroit to Toronto because there was no Detroit date. It was like four hour drive. And uh, we were really excited. Uh, we were pre-gaming at the hotel, which was not a good choice for me. Uh, but once I start drinking, man, I just cannot stop. It's just <laughs> like, I just pile it on and I get so excited, you know? So we showed up three quarters cocked for the show, definitely. Uh, I went in. I had uh, more cocktails, and this lineup was insane. It was like 1349, uh, boarded, suffocation. So I was really excited. I mean, Carcass is one of my favorite bands. I have a Carcass tattoo on my arm. It was my first tattoo, these tools oh, of the nice. trade here. Uh, by the time they played, I was blacked out for sure. So I basically only remember like a photograph of them on stage in my mind. So it's kind of sad how that played out. But... I was I was moshing. I came out of mosh retirement, which is something I should not do. I'm not good at it. I've never been good at it. I never have claimed to be good at it. But uh, right. I was so possessed by suffocation in particular that I was I was moshing so ignorantly that um, a kid he must have been about 18 years old finally got the courage to sock me in the face, and he hit me right here in the corner <laughs> of my mouth, and my face exploded. Like I was gushing blood, you know, I was, I was yeah. pretty drunk. So my blood was pretty thin, I imagine. And I was just like pumping it out. And I tried to go back to the bar and get another drink. And they're like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, basically I come to like a few hours later after the show back in the hotel room with everybody. And they're just like, wow, Trev, 
<laughs> real cool, man. <laughs> Great job. And like, yeah, I was really sad about having blown my opportunity to to see Carcass. I was there, you know, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's pretty much the long and short of it. And I have this weird scar and now like a couple uh, mustache hairs grow out of like the pink lip skin. <laughs> <in the corner>. No! <laughs> <laughs> i'll never i'll never forget that and uh you know i kind of like admire that kid you know he was like a hero to everyone around him i'm sure at that time <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> i wish i could find him and i'd take him out to lunch and be like i'm sorry man <laughs> <laughs> that guy pantera covered that other guy he really did yeah like i remember <laughs> like um like kind of going back and then standing back up and they said I was just smiling really huge, like, <laughs> you know, like stood back up and just was spraying blood, like arterial spray. I also have like a mosh wound. So like my, I have, I like got uh, a ring on my eyebrow and my eyelid fell down. Oh. I was in high school and I was going with like my like older punk friends to see Alkaline Trio. <laughs> and my uh, like friend heard like, uh, like clavicle play and he was like oh my god let's go into the pit and he immediately tripped fell in the pit I flew over his body and then I landed on like a rockabilly guy's like ring and my eyelid fell down I also like went to the bar and they were like no 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 <laughs> wait your eyelid fell down like Rocky like when they cut his <laughs> eyelid yeah, it was nuts. I called like my girlfriend and I was like, so I, uh, I I got like hit in the face. My eyelid fell down. She was like, oh my God, what do you, do we need to go to the hospital? What do you need? I was like, just bring a camera. This is going to look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't know how to transition from rockabilly mosh pit wound to Post Malone playing a Nirvana cover set to raise money for the WHO and COVID-19 relief. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. Post Malone did a Nirvana cover set to raise money. What did you guys think? I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I did not catch it when it actually, li it was an actual live stream and right. it was coming live from everyone's apartment. And Travis Barker from Blink-182 was on drums. Post Malone was wearing like his grandma's nightie. I was a little concerned and like the music sounds great. He sounded great. Post Malone vocally. And I mean, he's got a rock side to him. He just did that song with Ozzy. Uh, I really dug it. And after a while, I accepted the grandma frock because I'm like, that's actually kind of punk rock now that I think about it. So I think the dress, the dresses were on point. I feel like I'd seen Nirvana do that back in the day. And I, I thought the track selection was really cool. Um, I was surprised that they played Drain You. That's like my personal favorite from uh, Nevermind. I think everybody from like around our age group just like, you should love Nirvana. I think it was probably the gateway for a lot of us. It was for me to like get into any kind of gritty kind of music after that. You know what I mean? It definitely opened my 10 year old eyes to uh, other kinds of music. Yeah, that was cool. I, I, I appreciated the fact that they, you know, they, they did obviously a couple of obvious songs, but they did some kind of deep cuts and interesting choices. Um, and it's, it's cool. He's, he's a super talented dude. And I, I think that people look at him and, and, you know, kind of try to pigeonhole him. So yeah, from what I watched of it, I thought it was it was really good. I couldn't actually watch the entire thing because seeing the house full of Bud Light and old mimosas and bathing suits gave me anxiety, but everyone <laughs> sounded really good. Also, he tweeted out a phone number that you can text to get announcements. And uh, we don't know what this announcement is, but uh, Chris and Courtney Love all loved the set. Uh, I, what do you what do you guys think the announcement is? I think it's just something he's working on. It doesn't necessarily mean it's tied into Nirvana. This could have just been the gateway into like, let me get your attention. I agree with that. I don't think that there's like actual Nirvana dates. I feel like maybe some rock stuff from Post Malone. He's actually weirdly a good guitar player. There's like a lot of clips around of him kind of shredding. It's weird. He's a versatile young man i could see him making a band in the near future you know kind of like embracing all this attention for his like rock side and uh in the wake of that nirvana thing you know and travis could be a part of it he's a killer drummer that would be cool he apparently played in like a a scene a scene screamo kind of band when he was like a teenager before he became post malone you know guys 
New releases for the week. We got What the Dead Men Say, a new album from Trivium. What are we, how are we, how are we feeling? Trivium's that kind of band where they're just really consistently good. Like everything they put out, uh, it, it just sounds like Trivium. I mean, they've, they've evolved a lot. Uh, their earlier career, I think they had like a different sound and they kind of worked it out and then just kind of like rode that wave because it was what worked for them. And, um, you know, they're really good. I really like uh, Matt Heafy's voice. I think he is one of the best voices in metal, both from a, a vocalist like screaming standpoint and like a singing clean vocal standpoint. So yeah, definitely it's solid. If you're a Trivium fan, I definitely recommend it. That's cool. I think it's going to be a big record for the band. The the, um, the reviews that I've been seeing and the fans' feedback has been awesome. Um, and yeah, it's cool. Like you were saying about his vocals, I, I kind of, uh, he's almost got a little bit like a rise against his kind of like vocals going on when yeah. he's doing the clean vocal, you know, which is cool. That dude's got a great voice. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be good for them. And uh, the so- the title track has a, super heavy mosh part that we can get her to their the arrangements of their songs are bananas they're very good at composing a song that musically keeps getting interesting and fun and it's uh it's very impressive they're a very impressive band i think they there's like not a single part of it that had they don't have any weaknesses um for sound i think it's all it all sounds really good. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I, I really haven't checked in with them in a long time. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more commercial, you know, going for that than what I usually reach for. You know, but we have toured with those guys a few times in the early days when they were really like uh, jockeying Metallica, you know, like super hard. And now, like, uh, I was really impressed with what I heard. I thought it was, um, you know, really, like you said, really cool arrangements. Uh, there was a little bit of a progressive edge to some of the the riffs, and uh, there were like some cool harmonic rakes in the first song. Yeah, that, like, yeah, yeah, from yeah. Gojira, you know. And uh, the drummer, man, Alex yes. Bent is wow. He's I thought he stole the show, man. His the kit sounds so good. The toms are just like popping out, and he's just a madman with those fills, man. It's, it was I thought he was like incredible, dude. So. I'm not surprised that he's clean singing all the time now. You know, I used, he used to kind of mix it in. And uh, now, like, the uh, the growl is kind of the spared voice, that he uses that sometimes. But his clean voice is really impressive, man. I was really like, wow, dude. He, you know, I remember him as a little kid, so it's like he's a, he's <laughs> a man now. You know, he really is. All right, guys, let's move on to Elder's new album, omens uh this is my favorite of the week it's this is a an unbelievable album it's a a laser show at a planetarium but it's in, it's about something important it's great i loved it i really really enjoyed this album too it's super psychedelic super synthy it's got like this like real like 70s feels also just like it feels good you know it just hits you like it vibes it's really uplifting. Um, I really, really dig this album. Definitely among my favorites that came out this past week. I liked it. I had no previous experience with these guys whatsoever. And it's not like a genre that I really uh, touch on that much. But I, it really surprised me. I thought it was really cool. Um, the way they move through different textures throughout the song is just like really gripping. And... Um, you know, it didn't get into that that tool territory for me where they were making me wait too long and just like, all right, I lost interest. You know, like, just keeps moving. It's very cool. Uh, the vocal was a little bit more raw than I would expected. You know, it had sort of like a homegrown kind of thing to it, which I thought was cool. And uh, yeah, man, I'm definitely going to be going back to it. I, I liked it a lot. All right, the next new release is from Sirith Ungle, probably. I don't know. It's mostly consonants. Uh, I'm going with Sirith Ungle, Forever Black. uh, Molly Hatchet with Trolls. I'm having fun. What do you think, Katie? I found it pretty interesting. It definitely has this, like, iced earth feel to it where it's, like, somewhere in between power metal and, like, new album. And I just thought that was pretty cool because I, I haven't really found too many bands uh, that really capture that kind of sound. I, I dig it, yeah. Yeah, it's about my first time uh, hearing these guys, and like I think I think calling it a fun album definitely is a great um, a great way to describe it. It's pretty dirty, you know. I feel like it's just uh, if you go to see them play, there's a lot of guys in dirty denim or leather jacket, kind of tearing <laughs> it up, you know. 
<laughs> having, a, having a good old time in the pit. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was cool. I think it's really hard to um, come back after a long time, especially when you're known for having like a garagey kind of sound like they did on the early records, you know? And uh, I feel like it's still recognizable as them. And, you know, it's not too, too produced, which you don't want to do, you know, if you're in that world of uh, kind of classic mm. heavy metal, I think. Uh, you know, I love trolls. I love that whole fantasy slant, definitely. So uh, it ignited the nerd fire in me, definitely. <laughs> you don't normally hear like uh, a fantasy band that's like, uh, "We're gonna do, we're gonna do a gross troll voice." It's not full on Demu Borgir. It's just like a guy like. Rah! It was like <laughs> Southern trolls. I was for it. Let's move on to Warbringer, Weapons of Tomorrow. I've always been a fan of this band. Um, they are definitely like the kings of like the thrash metal revival scene where they just take the elements of everything that you want to hear in thrash and all the best bands and they just own it, make it their own. And they just like play what you want to hear, especially as like a, a fan of like old school thrash. But they also have this like kind of like modern vibe to them and i just really appreciate what they do with this album is no different like the first song sounded like it could have been like a slayer song the second song sounded like it could have been like a creator song and it just kind of like expands from there and uh, i really dig it and definitely a band i love to see in concert too they always bring it uh, a big big 10 out of 10 for me for this one yeah this this one for me might have been my album of of the week um yeah it's just like a, a really good thrash record it's, it's fast it's it's mean it's this when, when it gets slow it's it's still awesome the the theme for today is talking about moshing in the pit and there's a track called uh, outer reaches that has a mm. serious ass beater of a pit um yeah. i've never seen them live but i would love to catch them next time they come through new york the also there's i don't know was was it bongos there's a couple of like drum fills that sound like bongos that i thought were really cool yeah real phil collins hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah no the record rips i like it a lot i i loved it this was my favorite of the week definitely i haven't checked in with these guys in a while i think they're really cool though i've seen them live uh, a couple times like when we played a festival with them randomly the vocals are really stand out to me the, the dude is just so vicious man he sounds like a like a rabid dog, man. He's just barking it out and it's really commanding and the lyrics come across pretty easily, which is cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I straight up, I had the headbang a little bit and you know, that doesn't always happen, man. I'm, you know, I'm getting old here. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, I felt compelled. I had to, I had to whip the locks around a couple times. And we got a new single from Contra Cult Collective. Um, very industrial, very a little bit of Dillinger escape plan vibes sometimes. What did you think? Again, I really dug this one as well. There was also a video companion that came that went along with the song. Um, and I thought that was also just really well done. To me, I, I don't know that I necessarily heard a Dillinger vibe. Maybe I need to listen a little harder, but I felt that there was definitely like a Manson vibe. They did kind of like a um, home webcam, really grainy. They really like talk about adapting. I'm really for this band. I really dig it. Uh, I, and it's definitely one of those songs that just makes you want to dance. And like, it's just super catchy. Like I probably had that on loop, like maybe like five or six times. It, actually, probably more than that. It was pretty dope. They don't sound like like 43% burnt Dillinger. <laughs> There's just like, the, the, when the chorus comes in, it reminds me of like a later clean Dillinger chorus. I know what you're saying. I, I can see that. I'm not super well versed in Dillinger, but I know enough to know what you're talking about. And I kind of agree with you. It's cool. It's it's dark and moody. And um, it, it reminded me of like watching a movie where like the bad guys are, are looking for somebody and they show up at the nightclub and it's super loud in the nightclub and they're like trying to find the person. The person's kind of hiding out. And that was a song that's playing while they're seeking out the their prey if you will i thought it was cool um i liked the video you know like for a quarantine video especially i thought they made the most of it you know i had sort of like a snuff tape kind of vibe to it that was cool and uh yeah i found the song to have it had some sex appeal man i thought it was pretty sexy and uh reminded me a little bit of like stabbing westward maybe yeah you know i could see it i could see it going places for sure man i think it's gonna catch on definitely all right, Danzig sings Elvis. My grandma is stoked. Um, yeah, fine. I Danzig put out a record of all Elvis covers, and uh, most people hate it. Uh, I thought uh, it it was kind of fun. 
he sounded like he was having a really good time. I love this. I feel like this is the album that we all wanted, but didn't realize that we needed it and, and that we wanted it. it. This is just so perfect for him. He really needed an upswing because his last album that he put out on his own really, I'm sorry to say, wasn't very good. Um, on top of that, even though he had the Misfits reunion, some of those shows, he wasn't great, at least the first like leg of that. Then he just put out this movie that was just Veronica that was just ripped apart by critics. So I'm like stoked for this because to me, I'm like, great. Like he's like moving back up. He just put something out that's now like new and memorable. And I love it. He nails it, man. He nails it. And I I respect that. This hasn't been kindly reviewed by most people, but I think Danzig is my favorite musician. I love him uh, for so many reasons. People are like, uh, like, he doesn't have his voice anymore. I'm like, he's 62 years old. What do you think? Yeah. He's going to have an old voice now. That's like the lamest complaint. He, he gets criticized for his voice, uh, I think, more than anybody. And I think it's kind of not fair. Like, every, there are a million other musicians out there that are old and sound old. Like I just watched like the John Mulaney special that has David Byrne in it. And David Byrne sounds like a bunch of cigarettes in a lawnmower, but no one yelled at David. <laughs> no one's making a fuss about that. <laughs> Trevor, have, have, have you ever done the thing where you let one of your bandmates sing your set of practice because they think that like singing is not hard to do. And then they get through like 30 seconds of a song and they're just like, oh man, I didn't realize you, this was hard. No, but I'm totally going to do that. That sounds awesome. I'm ready for surprise. It's like in the Metallica documentary where he's like, he he wants him to to play the song with vocals and he's like, go sing it yourself. You know, it's just like, it's not an instrument, man. It's your, it's your body, you know? Um, And I'm not really talking about the actual album because I don't really care about it, but, but, but I'll defend, I'll defend the fact that the dude's, he's 60 something years old and his voice has been, has been through it, man. So uh, lay off. You know, if you really want Danzig sings Elvis. Like, if that's what you really want, uh, there are three options of prime Danzig singing Elvis. You have him covering Elvis on uh, on the uh, the live Snakes of Christ uh, uh, EP that came out right after How the Gods Kill. You have Blood and Tears on Danzig Two, amazing doo wop song. And actually, before that's Danzig so One, uh, Rick Rubin made him perform a uh, a doo-wop theme song for the movie Less Than Zero. And it is full Danzig doing his best, uh, like a best Elvis sound alike for, the, for this Robert Downey Jr. movie. The song is better than the movie. It's unbelievable. It's exactly what you want. Um, but for this album, for me, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's all like deep, deep Elvis cuts. It's just like a no Elvis poses in here. And like, I don't know, like my grandma <laughs> like can go to the show and she'll grab the mic because she knows that Elvis. So I would love it. Uh, you know, I thought it was cool. I, um, I definitely he's wanted to do this forever. He's been talking mm. about this for so long. And, you know, it probably would have been better when he was a little bit younger, maybe, you know, like he's, like he said, you got to kind of give him some credit for like, for staying around. And, you know, like when you record stuff and that's, that's that intricate when you're young and you're planning on sticking around, man, it's going to come bite you in the ass, man. It's just kind of mm-hmm. like what happens, you know, like look at David Lee Roth now, you know, it's like, it's a, can't do it like that anymore, you know? So I'm just glad he's still out trucking and, uh, you know, he definitely had his moment uh, in the sun, like at uh, Madison Square Garden with the Misfits. I, I was there for that. Amazing. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. And he seemed really happy. You know, he, he's notoriously angry, but he seemed genuinely happy that night. You know. All right. Well, that does it for this week's episode of Last Words. Trevor, where can we find you? I'm all over the web, man. Um, I'm on every social media. I'm also on Twitch lately. The, my handle there is... Just my name, Trevor Sternow, with no space. So if you want to see me play Nintendo and uh, talk Metal Shop, I will be there. Awesome. Sounds great. Going to add you on LinkedIn. Travis. You can find me on the old Twitter and Instagram. Just my name, Travis Riley. You love to see it. Katie. On Twitter and Instagram, you can find me at Merciful Kate. Awesome. Please be sure to follow Two Minutes to Late Night on 
Instagram at two minutes to late night on Twitter at two M two L N. Please follow the pit at we are the pit on all the social medias. If there's something you want us to talk about, please let us know in the comments. Um, We'll see you next Thursday. Goodbye.